year is quite a long theme. Last year it was let's stand, but this year is making obedient disciples that are rooted in Christ. Making obedient disciples that are rooted in Christ. And we as a church are embarking on a journey, a two-year journey, um, to move completely over away from an event-orientated church to a disciple-making machine, okay? And that is um, where this, <laughs> I don't know if you can say that, is that it's sound that biblical, a laboring, harvesting, combined discipleship machine, whatever you want to say it like, okay? Because discipleship is at the core of Christianity, and the, the culture of the West is flooding the church. Um, and the church wants to compete with the world, and we cannot compete with the world to try and entertain people. And the only answer is if we do stuff in a biblical way. I mean, and that's when we really do covenant relationships and we live in discipleship. We as a church have this privilege that almost 20,000 students have already gone through this church since it started. Um, so we've sent people all over the world. There's some people from England here tonight, and it's been here and done internship, and some people from all over. And so tonight, we're doing, we, I'm throwing three people into the deep end. It's international, they are three international speakers. They've flown out all the way from Stolby, Pater Noster, and what is the other place? Buffels, Jachs, Fontaine, okay? Ian Bart, met twee doodgeskiet Fontaine, something like that, okay? But um, tonight, we're going to do church a bit different as our first service. So we have three youth coaches that are in church and we have an organization called Amplified, which will which is our Amplified Youth Movement. It's an Amplified Youth Project. <clears throat> and so we place youth coaches in the different schools. And uh, three of them are here with us in church and they starting this year to be two of them are in Paul Ruiz, gonna be here. <clears throat> Some of them are gonna still study and then one is going to be in Stellenbosch High. So I'm going to introduce them now, now, but, but I'm just creating the vibe, expectation that they're going to make it. They have amazing hair, all of them. Some of them are more gray than me. Some have more hair. Others have a kaif. What is a kaif? A, a kaif in, in English. Okay. <clears throat> but just check them out. You put them in a box, judge them, but um, have mercy on them. Okay. So will you, the three of you guys stand up there. I told them only on Wednesday that they're going to preach. They thought I'm going to ma I made a joke. And I said, well, I have no problems throwing you into the deep end. But come stand here. So Jürgens and, and Luan, they're going to be at Paul Ruiz, youth coaches here in the, in the Cosais. And um, Marlon, he's the, they all, they have girlfriends. They are here, so they're checking you out. So don't pray prayers unto the Lord. Marlon is married to Mashai. Where's Mashai? Stand up, Mashai. Okay, she's um, not expecting anything. She's expecting the return of the Lord. Amen. Because they're only married for one year now. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, so they're going to they're gonna share with us concerning this discipleship and maybe some of the keys that, that um, they're embarking on that God has done in their lives and the Word of God. So Jürgens, um, j Dog is going to go first, okay, and then Luan and then Marlon. So let's open up our hearts. I'm going to pray for them, um, for the Word of God. It's the Word of God that changes our, our lives. And, and in this year, let's also pray for them, especially in, in Paul Ruiz and in Stellenbosch High. We're embarking on a journey to put youth coaches in every school in Stellenbosch. Um, so we've started to talk to the primary schools already. So by the end of this year, we're trusting the Lord by faith that we'll have people that the school doesn't pay for. We as a church pay for them through Amplified, sponsor them, and they, they are doing counseling, training, and, and becoming counselors in the schools. Because, I don't know if you know it, but even here in Paul Ruiz, in this residence, they say there's almost 70% of guys that smoke weed in their residence. You know, So the schools are being bombarded with everything except the Word of God. And so we have to go younger and younger when we disciple. Amen. So let's pray for them. Father, we thank you that we can receive your word tonight. We pray your blessing and your anointing on them, and we also consecrate them for this year at these schools, that you will give them open doors and favor to really make disciples, Lord, and, and you'll create a platform for us and for the whole body of Christ, not just for Shofar, but for every church to disciple the younger generations. Lord, especially in our homes, in our families, that we raise the standard of a God-fearing generation. 
that will say, our God lives, our God reigns, that will be uncompromising on your word, and Lord, that will live by faith and with the anointing on their lives and the calling on their lives. We thank you, Lord, for your word tonight, and we receive it from these three men. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lekker, lekker. Not nervous at all. Okay, cool. So my name is Jurgens, and I've been part of this church family for almost six, seven years now. It's been an amazing journey. I'm not going to try to say um, so if I say um, just show me something, a sign, or because I don't want to say um while I'm giving you this message. So yeah, I'm coming to Paul Ruiz, and I'm very excited. I'm also going to continue my studies. I finished my degree last year in forestry, so I'm going to become a teacher. I'm going to study PGCE next year, or this year, to become a teacher, um, which I'm very excited about. So just a bit of background, I grew up in a church with my mom and dad, they both loved the Lord, and uh, it, it was just like a routine, so I just went to church with them, sat on the hard benches, and it was a NG church, so I didn't like the hard benches, and we just sang a couple of songs, and it was an hour, and I was like very tired after an hour of church, and so, um, sorry, <laughs> and so I grew up with, with like the title of being a Christian, but I didn't have a relationship with, with Jesus, and I didn't know about the Holy Spirit, and I didn't know anything about discipleship and until I came to Stellenbosch. So in my grade 11 year, I was in Babel High School in, in Babel. So in my grade 11 year, I got a revelation of the blood of Jesus. And for the first time, I understood what the cross, what the cross meant. And so I got saved in that year. And immediately, the, the Christians in the school, the, all the Christians, they started inviting me to church. So my first sermon, um, or the first church service that I visited in Shafa was like three hours long. So compared to the one hour, now it was three hours, I was just like, yo, Lord, what is happening here? But I'm just going to come back because I was hungry for the Lord and something changed in my heart. So while I was in school, like all these Christians, the, the, all the Christians, they, we had small group and I just saw something different in them. I just, I just saw they had something else. And the first aspect that I want to we're going to speak of three different aspects. The first aspect that I want to speak about um, how to make disciples is the Holy Spirit. And these, these Christians really had the Holy Spirit. And I could see that in the way they operate. I could see that in the way they speak and how they treat people. And I was so hungry for the Holy Spirit. And so I got baptized and I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And the scripture in Luke 11 verse 13 says, uh, If you then being evil now to give good gifts to your sons, um, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? And that day I really asked God for God the Father for the Holy Spirit to guide me, to teach me, and to, to help me in this journey. And so I could really see that the way that those Christians discipled me was they, they had the Holy Spirit. And they were filled with the Spirit and they were walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I was very encouraged. And that really wants me to, to, to take me to the second, second part. Um, where I was going to matric and all these, 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 all the Christians that kind of like discipled me, they went out. And so I was left with another friend and we decided we're going to change the whole school for Jesus. We decided we're just going to go for it. And we tried to, we tried many things, but we didn't pray. We didn't ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. And so two months, three months went by and we soon realized that nothing has happened yet. We, we aren't seeing any fruits. So we prayed to God and God gave us three or four friends, and some of them are sitting here tonight. And um, so we, we were now the, the, the Christians in school, and I almost lost like all my friends. And so we were like all discipling one another. And we, I remember we had nights where we used to sit at my house. We sat in a circle. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit was something very new to me. So we would sit in a circle, and we would like practice the gifts of the Holy Spirit on each other. And we would like get words of knowledge. We would get visions over each other. We would trust God for like images. And it was so amazing um, just the hunger we had for the Holy Spirit at that stage and just the dependence on the Holy Spirit. We, we had to, to disciple each other and really to, to ask the Holy Spirit um, how, how He wants to see that person. And that's really a practical tip that I learned about this, uh, discipleship and especially discipleship in a group context is to really ask the Holy Spirit um, how does He see 
the other people, the, your other friends, maybe your small group or the class that you're in or even the church that we are in. And this really helped me. And it's still something that I'm struggling with and that I'm still growing and I'm still growing in the Lord a lot. I actually know nothing. And so I read a scripture in Acts 1 verse 8 and it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in all the earth. And so I realized when I read the scripture, I read it a couple of times, but the third or the fourth time, I, I noticed the word power and, and it just dropped into my spirit that it is the Holy Spirit that gives you power. It's the Holy Spirit that, that helps you in this discipleship. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you the words. It's the Holy Spirit that, that helps you and you and your friends to, and all of us in, in our walk with, with God. And especially if we speak about discipleship in terms of discipleship now to, to really give you that boldness and to give you that courage. And so, well, with this journey with the Lord, there was many times where I didn't know what to say to, to friends or when we didn't know how to, how to do this discipleship. And there's a scripture in Isaiah 11, um, which I'm just going to start at verse 2. It says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of the knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And so I realized that it's the Holy Spirit that helps us with our understanding. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us knowledge. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us wisdom. So I realized in times where, I, where, where you might not know how, what to say or how to disciple a person, or um, do you really just ask and trust the Holy Spirit because He is the Spirit of understanding. So that means He gives you understanding. He is the Spirit of, of counsel and of might and of wisdom. And so I was just encouraged, and I also want to just encourage each and every one of us um, to really to, to go to the Holy Spirit and to ask the Father for the Holy Spirit if you have not yet done it. And while praying for church tonight, I was just, I was in still by, and there's no water restrictions, so I was showering for a long time. I'm not going to say how long. And so I prayed for church, and, and God just showed me that while I was showering, like the, the waters that just flows, and the, the hot water does never stop. It just keeps on going hot and hotter. And so God just showed me, I just, I just realized, like, the Holy, God doesn't give the Holy Spirit with a limitation. The Holy Spirit comes without limit, and, and God is also without limit. And I just realized like how big our God was and, and the God that we serve. So I just want to yeah, end off with that to really encourage us to really be obedient towards or to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and to ask the Holy Spirit, even for us as a church and for us as um, Stellenbosch and for us as a nation, how, how can we make disciples of all the nations? How can we as a church be make disciples of, of all the nations in, in the community around us? Yeah, thank you. So I would like to call up my brother. feels like we're playing the Olympic Games. I feel like I've got the torch and I'm going to give it over. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. <laughs> you see us. Um, my name is Luan. And I remember when I was a, when I was a little boy of Almost five years old, me and my family would have a shout out to my rent a crowd family sitting there as well. Um, <laughs> I was, we were having Bible study and I would take the music stand with the Bible and I'll stand there and I'll tell my, tell my, my parents and my sisters, I'm going to preach the, I'm going to preach the gospel when I'm 90 years old. Can I get do a mini word? And today I'm a bit younger and that dream, dream has come true. So, um, let's go for it. <laughs> Um, so today I'm gonna I'm gonna build on what Jurgen said and continue with the topic of obedience and faith in terms of discipleship. And Jurgen spoke about the the Holy Spirit and the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And yeah, you know, the Bible says that in in John 10 that us as God's people we we hear His voice, and and that's a fact. All of us who, who follows Jesus and who knows Him and who, who is His children. Uh, hears his voice and with with that said it is the fact that um sorry i just <laughs> okay so we all we all hear god's voice that's a fact john john 10 says that his sheep hears his voice and the challenge is not always to to hear god's voice the challenge is what do we do with his voice what do we do with that that thing that, that we sometimes hear in our quiet time, that voice that we hear in our hearts, what do we do with that? And 
many times um, what I do is, if it's very challenging, I just like put it to the side and I go on with my own life. Um, but the challenging thing about, about hearing God's voice is actually how much do you value it and will you obey what, it, what, what, God, is, what God is saying to you? So we see in James 1.22, one, chapter 1.22, it says, um, but we must do, be doers of the word and not only hearers, only deceiving yourselves. And, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a challenge of hearing God's voice and experiencing the Holy Spirit is how much do we value it? How much do we value that time that we spend with God and that, that words that He gives us in our quiet time? Um, I remember when I was, I must also focus on it, not saying, um, thank you, Jurgens. I remember when I was first here in our residence here in Alderberg and we came back from holiday and there was three guys in the residence who was really on fire for Jesus and who followed Jesus. And we really trusted God for, for more people in the residence to come to know him and to come to salvation. And we were sitting in, in our zone leader's room the one, the one night, and we were just talking through our holiday. And I remember I, I told them, I felt this, this thing the Holy Spirit told me. He told me that we should start walking around the residence in the mornings. And for a student... That's a bit tough. Um, eight o'clock class is already very early, but to wake up for prayer before the eight o'clock class was, was k- kind of suffering. Um, but <laughs> unfortunately, my friend was uh, sat on the bed opposite me and he said, wow, I felt the same thing. So um, yeah, that's what we started doing. So we, we divided it up. Me and my friend would pr- pray the one morning and me and my other friend would pray the other morning and the third morning I would have off so then I can sleep late. Um, ready for eight o'clock class. And the amazing thing about, about that word and about the obedience that came from it was that through the last six months of the term, we saw at least 20 guys coming to salvation in our residence. And I know that, that, that number doesn't sound so significant in a church of 800 people, but for us in that resident, residence, it was, it was very significant. It was powerful to see so many guys coming to salvation. I remember we would drive to the Kutzenberg Dam every week and we would baptize someone and pray with them. And the whole, every person that got saved the previous week would go together and all of us would stand around him and pray for him and speak life over him and prophesy over him. And yeah, that was, that was a testimony in my life where I really saw the power of just being obedient to, to that voice and being obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And what I'm also challenged with the, the past couple of, of months and weeks was to, maybe I should, I should just link this with, with discipleship as well. So the, the point of, of this is where do you have to be obedient in your life in terms of discipling people? Um, and I don't know if you can give homework for, for a church, because it's, but we're in the school hall, so I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> um, but maybe that can be, be homework for, for, for next week, or, or just something to think f- through for the, for the next week. Where can you, if you are discipling someone, what's that, what's that thing that you need to be obedient towards um, in, in that person that you're discipling, or in that group of people that you're discipling? Who's that? What's that thing you, you need to be obedient to? Maybe you need to look for someone that, that you can disciple. And the challenge for me when it comes to um, obeying God's voice was really to, to have faith that what God says will actually happen. And for me, the, the, the challenge was to almost to, to have faith means to completely trust, to, to have confidence in. And for me, it's, it's sometimes a challenge to have confidence in trusting that when I obey that it will bear fruit and that God knows what he's, what he's telling me is actually, it's very legit. It's not just a joke. It's not a, it's not a something he's playing around with. He's, he doesn't make mistakes. Um, and what he tells me is something that I can trust him with. Um, and we see that without faith, it's impossible to please God. As, as you can see in Hebrews 11 verse 6, I'm just going to read it from the screen again. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please, to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Other translation says, reward those who diligently seek him. And yeah, that's just another piece of homework. (laughs) 
I must actually give like a homework sheet. <laughs> Everyone can get one at the door. Um, so that's another another piece of homework is what's what's that things, especially now in the, in the start of the year, that that we can that you can stand in faith for. Um, maybe in your marriage, what's that thing that you can stand in faith for in your marriage with your spouse um, to change in your in your relationship? What's that? What's that thing that you can have faith and put your faith out for um, for discipling someone? Maybe the, the Lord is, or you need to trust that this guy that you're discipling needs to needs to get baptized, and you need to stand in faith for that and pray for that and 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 wrestle with that. Um, and maybe that's also another just a, a question that you can answer here in the start of the year. What's what's those things that you need to stand in faith for um, in this year and in this period that's lying ahead? Um, of you, and um, I think something very important to to share about this topic that I'm speaking about of hearing God's voice and obeying Him and doing it out of a place of faith is that our culture is is broken and and we live in a very individualistic culture. So sometimes we think that when God speaks, He only speaks to us, and uh, we take it as this individual thing that. Luan, you need to do this, and then I go do it. But I don't consult anyone around me, or I don't. Uh, I'm not accountable to anyone around me, or no one else knows what I'm doing. And I remember this uh, story that I think she has told it this morning as well. But I'm just going to go for it again um, about John Yip. It's, he's one of the pastors of the church, and he told the story of how he had to make a decision on whether he, he would move to Malaysia, and and. He said that he was too emotional to make the decision. So he called his friends, six of his best friends, and he told them, um, will you please pray with me? Because I don't know if, if I can hear God's voice while I'm so emotional. And I, I, he told them his situation. He told them, will you please let me know by this and this date? And when that date came, he called them again, or he called him, and uh, he, they gave him the answer. And, and that's just a... And and that's what he took. That's that's that was the final say. And and that's that challenge. That story challenged me a lot because it means that we're not um, independent. We can't follow God in that way. It's an interdependent relationship with each other as well, where we can trust each other for for words into our life. Um, and yeah, that's that's something that that us as a a church can maybe be challenged with is to really think of these questions of faith and obedience as where can we as a church be, be obedient to? Um, what can us as a church stand in faith for? It's not only see us who's the pastor who needs to stand in faith for, for this old church. It's us as the church who can stand in faith for this new vision or this new statement that came out for it to come true and for it to, to come to pass. And I think my time is up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish, finish with that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it is. It's not a just to finish off. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a God told me. It's what what is God telling us as well. Um, yeah, and with that, I'm gonna give over to to Marlon. Otherwise, I'm gonna preach all night. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, so you know, my name is Marlon. I'm also not going to try not to say that word. I won't even say it. So I'm really excited about this whole topic about discipleship and following God's voice. But it's so important, as we all know, that this is one of the biggest commands that God gave. Like just before Jesus went, he said, go out and make disciples. And what I've learned in my life is that we can't make disciples effectively just by ourselves we need one another we are a, a body in christ and something that that helped me is really to have an accountability partner regarding this and if with accountability i mean you have someone in your life that can ask you questions about discipleship so what i'll do is i have a friend and me and him i'll ask him okay so tell me in 2020 who are the guys that you're going to disciple this year and then he tell me he will tell me the guys' names, and then I'll say, "Okay, cool." And then he'll ask me, "Okay, Marlon, who are the guys that you're going to disciple this year?" And then I'll say, "Okay, this and this and this." And and then we will pray together, and um, he will tell me that 
like what are the things that he's standing in faithful for those guys and i'll i'll tell him like yo i'm really trusting this guy that he will join a small group or that he will get baptized and the cool thing with community is that i can i'm standing in faith not only for my cell guys but i'm standing in faith for his guys that he's also standing in faith for so i will pray with him for those guys and he will pray with me for my small group guys and then it's it's so amazing how since we made that shift how things just started happening like crazy um because the lord says like where there is agreement he commands a blessing and it's just amazing to see that if we look i think the world will really be boring if we just go by ourselves but if we stand together and and think together like what can we do as a group as a church to change this town because i don't know about you but i want to see the whole of Stellenbosch saved and i really believe that if we are if we come together like siakulisia says we are stronger together um, i think that we can do it so i really believe that accountability is a, a very important part in making disciples and i'm just going to read the scripture for us in 1 john verse 5 to 7 it says this is the message that we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that god is light and in him there is no darkness at all if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness we lie and we do not practice the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with him, with one another and the blood of jesus his son cleanses us from all sin so this is just an awesome scripture for me showing that we really we need to be transparent with one another we need to tell one another like what's going on in your life and by that we have fellowship with one another and his blood can cleanse us and i just want to share a story but of my own story where there was a guy that saw something in me that the holy spirit revealed to him that the world didn't see so i was i was very in the world i i really i was just seeking my own desires i was a very selfish person uh, my brother is here tonight and uh, he can testify to that <laughs> when i when i was young i really just did my own thing and i i had no purpose in life i i always say like it was as if i was a fish just floating in the sea and i just felt like i'm just going to go through this world and that's going to be that i re- i never felt like i was going in any direction and then this guy came and he was a very strict guy and he started walking a road with me and the cool thing is i know now that not only did he trust for my salvation but he had a he had a group of friends and and the pastor also they were praying for me like crazy they were trusting together as a community to to see me get saved and i think they might have got discouraged a bit because i was like yeah yeah i'm committing i'm committing and then yes i would go back into the world and then i'll be there again yeah 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 sunday i'm i'm there i'm i'm for christ and then i would be in the in the kair plaque the next day and he, but he just kept on going and i think it must have been like with his community maybe he tried thinking like yo he doesn't know about this guy he's going to to forget forget about him and i don't know if he had friends telling him no but come on man just stand in faith for this guy and then i'll never forget it one night he told me okay uh oh well he asked me again like so did you backslide again i was like uh, yes i did unfortunately and he said okay we're going up the mountain i was like yo yeah, okay and on the 4th of february 2016 we went up the mountain i i'll never forget it was a night it was at night and the wind was blowing crazy and then he told me okay my on tonight you're going to choose either you choose god or you choose the world and if you say it like that it sounds quite hectic but it is actually as simple as that like with god it's you either for him or you're against him and and we can make that decision tonight and that night i made the decision to follow god and jesus christ that night changed my whole life he he made me a new creation he all of a sudden i i didn't want to do the things that i did before all of a sudden my desires were not so selfish i wanted to help people and i wanted to yeah you know, just love people i and all of a sudden i just kept telling everyone around me about jesus that was my main focus now 
And the cool thing is, like, I'm so thankful about that guy and his friends because there are so many people in this life, like me, that might be your neighbor, that might stay in your residence, that might, yeah, like, walk class with you every day. They might serve your food at the Corsairs. They might, I don't know, you might throw your petrol in there every time. And I just want to encourage all of us that we have this gift that we know that the only true God that can give us salvation for eternity. And we can decide what we want to do with that. Either we can keep it for ourselves or we can hand it out to all those around us. And I'll never forget, I, I was in res and I, some of you might have heard this story, but I had an hour off, you know, like a student has a busy schedule. <laughs> and um, I, I said, yo, okay, in this off hour, I'm going, to, I'm going to speak to someone about God, okay? And then I, I was walking in the res, and then I felt the Holy Spirit say, this is the guy. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then this guy came to me, and he was like, yo, I watched this video about angels and demons. Do you think they are real? Like, and then I was like, yo, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I knew, like, God is, God is working the whole time, and we must just position ourselves to that place where we don't have to make our mark, but that he can make his mark. And I spoke to that guy for four hours. We both cried. It was such a good chat. The next morning at six, he came with me to intercession. And then he decided to follow Christ. He got baptized and he told me that his family, for the first time in three years, they decided to go to church because of what happened to him. And then I thought like, yo, I just was sitting in my room and I thought like, yo, let me just go and try and look if there's someone I can speak to about God. And that amazing thing happened. And it sounds so simple, but it is actually that simple. <laughs> um, we don't have to, sometimes we try and complicate it. We're like, no, I'm not good enough. Or first I must like do Bible school and all these things. But if we are just obedient in Christ and and if we have people that the whole time challenge us. So with my friend, I know it's challenging because if I don't disciple guys, he's going to ask me, so what about these guys? And I'm like, yes, I know I must disciple it because it's a command of God. It's not just a personal goal for me, but it's a thing that we all must do. And in our small groups, let's, let's keep one another accountable to see who we can disciple. Um, it was so challenging for me this past year. I worked. Um, in a company where, or I wouldn't say it was my first option to work there, but God just challenged me like, yo, what are you going to do here for my kingdom? And then I decided, okay, but let's start a small group here in the workplace. And then every, so then in the one meeting, I just went, okay, guys, every Tuesday morning before work, I'm going to be in that one room and we're going to read the Bible and and speak about God. If you, If anyone wants to come, you can come. If you don't want to come, it's fine. And I didn't really think anyone would come. And they, that first Tuesday morning, five guys were there. And they were like, ready. And they were technicians, rough guys. And so it was lacquer. <laughs> but, yeah, I just want to encourage you tonight that we are here together. And I really think we emphasize it tonight that we must stop thinking of me and thinking more about we. And... Let's, let's stand in faith. Let's put our faith together. Let's see what will happen in this town if we actually just stand together for Christ. I think that crazy stuff can happen. Let's stand together in the schools. Let's stand together in the university, in the workplaces, and, and live for Christ. Because um, truly, you're truly a disciple when you start making disciples. And, yeah, I just want to encourage you tonight that there are so many people in your life that you might think is like just another person, but Jesus has a plan for that guy or that girl. It can even be someone, many times we think, no, this person, like, believe me, those technicians, I thought there's no ways. Like, and God just come and challenged me and said, but he died for the worst sinner. There's no sinner too bad. And maybe you're sitting here tonight and you think like, no, my sin is too bad. I can't disciple people, but I want to tell you, the blood of Jesus is enough for you. 
The blood of Jesus has cleansed all your sins. If you accept him and follow him, the Bible says we must repent and be baptized and follow him. He is enough. And yeah, I just want to ask the band to come up. And let's all stand tonight.